Hey guys and welcome to, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Russ and on this channel we talk about Jeeps and all things vehicle based adventure. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick around because today we're going to be talking about axles. Recently, most of you know this, but I put a V8 into my Jeep. I went with a generation five LT1 that's 460 horsepower and 465 foot pounds of torque. Now, Having said that, a traditional axle could probably hold up for quite a long time depending on the type of wheeling that you do. I know that I drive hard. I drive fast and I didn't want to break anything. So I decided to upgrade my axles to some TerraFlex wide full float axles, both front and rear. So a traditional Dana 60 would have a semi-float design, meaning it's got the ring and pinion that is a 60 size. Uh, however, the axle shafts are like 32 or 35 spline, sometimes even chromoly, but they're still putting a lot of task onto a single bearing on the outside of the axle. So not only does that, is that bearing responsible for turning, it's also responsible for supporting the weight of the vehicle. After the quite substantial beatdown that this Jeep has been getting over the past couple of months, I noticed a very small leak on one of the axle shafts. It's a very simple thing to fix, especially when you have a full float design, but I did think they would, might be a little bit beneficial for you guys to understand some of the key differences between a full float design and a semi float design, uh, just for educational purposes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this messy job and uh, you guys can follow along. Well, you know what, sometimes we make misdiagnose things and uh, I checked the torque specs for the actual hub bolts uh, or the shaft, axle shaft bolts. They're supposed to be at 95 foot pounds. Some of them were actually loose enough to where I can turn them by hand with a wrench. Uh, so that's probably where my leak was coming from. So I've tightened all that down and uh, I'm gonna take it for a test drive. Okay, so sometimes we get lucky, right? Uh, that's a, a pretty cool thing. I've been driving around for about 45 minutes to really heat up the oil, give it the beans a couple of times, and uh, yeah, come to find out that the loose bolts were all lit. So note to self, uh, when I'm doing my bolt checks, you know, it's really important for me to make sure that those bolts, all 16 of those holding in the, the rear axle shafts uh, are down at 95 foot-pounds. So yeah. Lucky me. So it's just a little bit after six o'clock, so traffic is still a little crazy, but I've been driving it for a while. Just confirmed that I'm not leaking anything out of the, uh, the axle shaft seal. Uh, so the cool thing about that is, is that I'm not worried about losing diff oil. So I can actually take you guys on a little bit of a ride, let you uh, possibly, maybe, I don't know, hear this thing roar a little bit. Um, so yeah, I've got about 10 minutes worth of driving to do. I've got a couple of cars in front of me, a couple behind me, so I'm gonna wait for that to clear up. And then uh, I'm gonna give you the beans a couple of times and uh, just so you guys can hear this thing roar, all right? Okay, well, my day just got a lot easier. Uh, sorry, the lighting sucks. Let me shift. Okay, so my day just got a lot easier. Uh, what I thought was the problem wasn't actually the problem. So that's good news for me. Bad news for this video. So sorry about that. Let's get back to the point. The point is the semi-float axles have 
think of it like a, a donut at the end of a, a toothpick, right? You've got the wheel attached to the actual axle shaft. The axle shaft is supported inside of the axle tube by one bearing that is bearing the weight of the vehicle as well as responsible for turning and moving the vehicle forward. Now, in a full float situation, it couldn't be any more different. In a full float situation, you have a spindle and the spindle has two bearings on the outside of it and then the hub around that. Now the spindle is attached directly to the axle, therefore the axle shaft is not supporting the weight of the vehicle at all and it's only responsible for the rotational force to move the vehicle forward. Now what that means is, is that in a full float situation, all of the 465 foot-pounds of torque uh, that this engine, this V8 LT1, uh, can produce is going straight to the rotational force moving me forward, which means better acceleration, less rotational, uh, rotational resistance. It is just the best option for a high-powered, full-throttle situation. It's also incredibly common for a regular 5-on-5 semi-float axle shaft to bend, twist, or break when you're on the trail under high stress uh, obstacles. Uh, when you're trying to apply maximum torque, when that axle shaft has to support the weight of the vehicle, the impact forces uh, that are coming from below, because the wheel itself is attached to it, it is prone to want to move forward while also not really being able to handle the weight and the impact uh, coming towards it. That's a lot to ask for one bearing. So in a big situation, when you're running 35s, 37s, 40s, and on up, you really should consider looking at a full float option. Now still, on a 5-on-5 setup or a traditional semi-float axle setup for a Jeep, you can get upgrades to your axle shafts. You can get a, um, you can get chromoly axle shafts from Nitro. You can get them from uh, Yukon Axle and Gear. Regardless of that, you can also upgrade the ARB lockers or whatever scenario you have on the internals of your differential to match the spline count. Therefore, I just burped. That's cool. Anyway, I... I actually did that first. I upgraded to a 32 spline from the 27 spline, and that was a that was good enough for me for a while. And then I bent an axle shaft. I knew deep down that I wanted to put a V8 inside of this Jeep. I've been planning it for years and saving for it for years and years. And I had no really no real idea in the very beginning exactly what engine I was going to go with and exactly what would be required to make that happen. So I started doing research. And in my research, I found that all I needed to do to really ensure the safety of these axles, the axle shafts, and save myself some money in the long run is to upgrade these axles to something that could actually handle it. Now you might be thinking, okay, Sure, I'll put Dana 60s underneath my vehicle. The thing of it is, the ring and the pinion, although it is responsible for a lot, or handling a lot of torque, it is not going to save your axle shafts because of the same thing that I said a second ago. You were going to put a lot of stress, even more stress than you are with the 3.6, on that single axle shaft supported by one bearing trying to rotate a donut. So in a nutshell, I really hope you found this video helpful, educational, and even, albeit, a little bit entertaining. All of that being said, I really hope you're living life adventurously, and I will see you on the trail.